All right, what's up, Amor? You want to learn about Ichimoku breakouts, right? What's up? Yeah, uh, recently I've been trying to make it my strategy. So breakouts, spikes, and all that. Trying to perfect it, back test it. And I had a few questions for you yesterday, which we went over. Yeah, and I wanted to make a video so that people can be helped as well. So let's do it. What are your questions? Right, so um, sometimes when a, when price breaks out of a trend, right, it breaks out of a range, um, what are some ways we can know whether it's going to spike or whether it's going to uh, continue the breakout and you can pay for the breakout? Gotcha. Well, one of the strategies I've used for years and years is using Ichimoku for breakouts, to confirm breakouts, because as you said, price will tend to consolidate, get into a range, and then it will break. That's what a breakout is. Happens all the time, and Ichimoku is a really good tool for analyzing that. Now, I've talked about this in a lot of videos before with Bitcoin on the daily. It's one of the most, it's one of the best validation tools over the years. I actually made a video earlier this year proving how following the strategy was better than a HODL approach. Basically, when here's here's the basics of an Ichimoku breakout. Okay, so if we go back to let's say. Uh, October of 2020. All right. So price of Bitcoin was consolidating between 12,000 and down around 10,000. Okay. You with me so far? Yep. All right. So when it did this, I was going to bring up a little square here. There we go. So you can, if you don't have Ichimoku, most people will sit here and they'll look at that and they'll say like, okay, well, I'm going to wait for there to be, you know, a breakout of the high up here at 12,000, but that's going to be a little late into the move. So what Ichimoku lets you do is it gives you this cloud. That's the most fundamental component of Ichimoku. The cloud is based on past price action. It's also based on 50% retracements. But when price gets out of that cloud, that is your first sign that a breakout might be occurring. Okay. There's mm -hmm. one more tool in the Ichimoku indicator, which a lot of people ignore, but I think is one of the most important, which is the lagging span or chikao. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly in Japanese, but this is like the confirmation. All right. So what you want to do is when price first gets out of the cloud, because that'll happen first, you want to wait for that momentum to get out as well. And it may hang around in the cloud for a while, but once you get that signal, both price and momentum out of the cloud in the same direction. That is your sign for a breakout. That is a confirmed Ichimoku breakout. Got it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, just to recap, you know, it, first of all, it has to be above the cloud. And second, you want the momentum. You want the, yeah, the momentum, which is yep. the lagging. Sorry, I don't know the term. Well, that's, the... that's just the different words that I've used for it. Uh, the Japanese yeah. word is C H I uh, C. Oh, I can't remember. Chikao. Um, but the in trading view, uh, if you're changing the color on it, it is the lagging span. Uh, mm -hmm. Wait, no, d lagging span two periods. Uh, yeah, lagging span. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's how you change the yep. color of it. That's what they call it. And I just sort of call it momentum because that's what it's actually telling you. Like, is the momentum strong or weak? If it's in the cloud, it's still weak. But if it gets out of the cloud, now it's strong. But what you can see now is once that happens, that can be a very powerful tool. And it actually lets you get in before sometimes it actually breaks that major high. And so it's, it can kind of let you play off base a little bit. Now, this is also great for telling you when the trend ends, because if it's going to work one way, it should work the other way, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the I mean, theory. That's, that was interesting. I was, I was going to ask, where would you set your stops? How would well, you enter the trade? Did, where would in you this, take off it? Yeah. Good question. In this from October, 2020, all the way up here to, you know, March of 2021, has it, has price even gotten below the cloud? Nope. No. Said above. The daily chart, I know it's not day trading like a lot of people, a lot of young whippersnappers want to trade, but the daily chart is really what controls it. All right, now, now we've got something interesting happening, don't we? We've got price mm -hmm. coming down here and getting outside the cloud in April of 2021, all right? But what is momentum doing? It's still above. It's still 
above the cloud, touched it, but it's still above it. This tells you that it is not yet over. All right, so you get a little bit of a more a move up here. That could have possibly, in you know, an alternate timeline, gone on to go up to 300K like people thought it was going to be. But now, once again, we have a situation here at about 50. Where's momentum? Uh, still in the cloud, but it still penetrated. Still in the cloud. Let's okay. go forward. All right, now what do we have? Boom, outside the cloud. Both. Right. So what would you do in this scenario? Uh, take profit. Well, if you were in your long from here, yes. So you would have been able to capture this whole October through May of 2021 move, right? Mm, yeah. Um, we didn't get the high. That's okay. And, you know, we didn't get the low back at the beginning of COVID, but we caught the meat of the trend, didn't we? Basically, if you, if you looked at this from a trade perspective, you know, your breakout was about right here. Uh, you got out right about there. And so, you know, you basically captured a movement in Bitcoin of 300% with a very high probability. Mm -hmm. And I, mm, I challenge people one. to go back and validate this because, you know, once we go through this, well, that instance, remember when price got below the cloud, momentum, that told you we were going into that summer mode, right? Mm. <clears throat> All right, now let's, let's go forward a little bit more. And we'll get into the futures trading here in a second, how to use it. But all right, so here, once again, on the bull side of things, what happened? Uh, and, go back above the cloud again. Right, August, August at this point, now you have your confirmation signal again, and that actually let people get back into this trend as well, right? Mm. So you had every right reason to be in at this point, right? And you could have never violated the cloud here, did it? But nope. it pulled back in September, right? So now you're up, you're up, you're up. You're in the second bull trend. Now what happened in December? Oh, that spike. Yeah, it's, that spike it's got coming. you out of the cloud. I made so many posts. I made so many posts about this December. Uh, I think it was a jobs report where people knew they were going to raise interest rates. I made so I, I tried to warn people so hard. And again, if you just followed the technical strategy, if you gotten in here and you had been disciplined and gotten out here at 48, you would have made a little bit of profit, but you wouldn't have taken a loss, would you? Yep, that's true. And so, but, you know, HODL, right? That's the only thing we should do. Is this, the is this the first time it broke the cloud with the... Since uh, we've only got about 20 minutes, I'm going to challenge you to do some homework. And if you want to cheat, you can actually go back to a video that I made on my either on TradingView or YouTube channel. Uh, I'll try to find the link and I'll post it in the description where I actually went through this strategy and showed how it outperformed just hodling, just following the strategy. All right. So, that's, that's great. Thank yeah, you very I'll send much. That, I'll send that to you. Everything. So I just want one last question if we yeah. have the time for it. What's the other line? So I know the red line in between that's the Tenkinson and yeah, we, we, the lag in we, we've got we've got time. We've got another few minutes. Just trading view has a limit, but uh that's those lines are a separate discussion. We're just talking about Ichimoku breakouts. That's what you want to know, right? Oh. Yep. The red okay. line, green line, the Tinkinson, Cajunson, that's different. That's a, that's a whole those are whole other strategies that I use. Really the only thing you need to focus on is price and the momentum the lagging span okay all right so, sounds perfect yeah and so if we just continue this on because you know bitcoins everyone's talking about that today and it's a great example of this over the years again that would have kept you out of this move it would have made sure that you got out about 49k and then again what happened here in march right mm -hmm. you got price above the cloud but where was momentum um still below way below yeah way below there and that kept you from getting in there okay now here you did get that confirmation okay mm -hmm. let's see how that turned out so from there to there but here technically speaking you had the inverse happen right so yep. is is any system 100 percent uh, no, but no. I, I haven't seen you use any sort of line support resistance like for, for the actual breakout or do you just uh, come off these indicators no. alone? We're just going to keep it simple. And the simple thing is if you look at the trading system as a whole, remember we caught this move very accurately. Huh? 
we got a small win or break even here. And then we took a bit of a loss here, right? Mm, much smaller. But the thing is, you're getting out of Bitcoin at about 40K because you're yep, disciplined <laughs> and you would have avoided what we are seeing here. Or if you wanted to short Bitcoin, that would have been a pretty good short, wouldn't it? Yep, 100%. Okay. So now let's let's look at futures because I know that's what you wanted to use this for uh, with NASDAQ in particular. All right. And we're doing now we're getting down to the day trading. Uh, so there was a instance. Um, I pulled it up from my log because I try to watch, watch the futures every day. And I usually take screenshots and have a little uh, little photo album of all of them. So June the 7th, if I recall correctly. Let me go back and find it. June the 7th in the morning. There we go. Or is it June? 8th? No, it's June the 7th. Pretty sure. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So this is a one minute of the NASDAQ futures. All right. And this is what you'll see in a lot of cases, all right? So cloud and price are both going in what direction? Mm, down, still over yeah, there. Right. <clears throat> and so what you, and, and a couple of times you see where uh, price pokes its head above the cloud, pokes its head above the cloud, but what is momentum doing? Still below. Yep. So that keeps you from taking the breakout, doesn't it? So if we go forward and we look to the favorite time of day, which is the open, all right, Ooh, you got a lot of volatility it. going on here, don't you? But notice yep. something. This time when price got above the cloud, it let's just go back a few bars. Okay, so this is basically the spike indicator I use for reversals, right? But... What this did is by not jumping in here, it created a high, a spike right here. Okay. See that? Mm, right okay. after a doji as well. After yeah. Well, it's, it's a doji. Yeah, exactly. So you have this opening price action right here that gets you set up for the breakout. And then if you, if you jumped in, then they would have taken you for a little ride, wouldn't they? So what I like to yep. do, the reason I like to combine the spikes is because number one, they make you patient. They make you like the spikes don't fire the alerts that I have set up unless the bar closes. And just waiting for a bar to close, no matter what time frame it is, it forces you to be patient. Okay. But it also, the whole theory behind me using spikes for reversals is that, you know, if I'm going to take a, a short off that spike, then my stop is going to be right above that spike because that's basically where. They ran price up too, and then they slammed it back down. So mm. all the people that went short from that point, if it comes up to break that high, what are they going to do? Um, stop us. They're going to stop out. And then what is price going to do when people are getting stopped out? Back. <laughs> it's going to go up. So that's the yep. whole theory behind it, and it works very well. And so what you can do is you can pretend like, okay, if it goes above this high right here, I know it's a breakout. If it goes above this high that the 930 open made, then that's going to trigger a cascade of people that were short needing to get out, which is going to make them go long. And so if you want to oh, be yeah, very, correct. Sorry, if I, you want to, I got it wrong. <laughs> no, you, you were on the right path. Um, and so if you want to be generous in your stop loss, well, you look at these first three minutes of the open and you say, okay, well, if it if the inverse is also true, if it comes down to break the 932 bar, that low, then then it's over for me and I need to get out. Because that lets you set up your risk reward. And on a breakout, you almost have to go with a one-to-one. -one. You can be a little more ambitious, but start with that. And so if we just do that and we say like, okay, these first three minutes of the open have given us the range. So let's see what happens. So triggers the breakout, people are getting stopped out, and this is a great example of how a breakout can happen. But the key things that's going on right here is, you know, yeah, you're, you, most people would have been either asleep or not trading in these hours, but you kept yourself from doing a breakout here. You avoided that loss. You kept yourself from doing a breakout here and here. You basically stayed patient 
until the open. And then you had a setup. You had price action do this and this little inversion here. And then you know if it breaks out of that price action, that's the direction it's going to go. And so you set up a breakout. So you have both Ichimoku setting up, or it's even more than just both. You have Ichimoku breakout setting up, just like I showed you. You have the theory of price spikes, where if it breaks that spike, people are going to get stopped out. Um, and you also have the event of the market open, which can be very, very uh, impactful. All right. Questions? Questions. Um, you see when it spiked down, I don't think the purple line even went below the cloud, did it? Um, it so here's the thing. That's a very good point. So if we look at this right here, all right, so let's clean things up. The purple line is the closing price shifted backwards. And so, again, it goes back to my whole thesis of waiting for a bar to close being very important because that makes you patient. And so what you have to do before you consider this purple line is you need to wait for the bar to close. Okay. Notice, look what it did there. Watch this, watch this in real time. Watch this. You know, I can't really go any slower on trading view than one minute, but watch, I'm going to hit play. That's what the bar looked like. And then it shot back up. Let's try that one more time. So this is one minute. This is at uh, nine thirty-one. Mm -hmm. Let me let me slow it down really slow. All right, play. Maybe that's too slow. Boom. All right. Oh, look, look. It's but see that? You see how yeah, so it, you was had, below. it was below it? But then by the time this nine thirty-two bar closed, that price had come all the way back up. Do you see how important it is to wait for a bar to close before you analyze it? Oh, definitely. Yeah. That's so that's, again, at the end of the day, like, we're not going to predict the future with with technical analysis. But what it does is it kind of wraps our trading in these tools that maintain our psychology. That's what I really believe. Because by the fact that, you know, you're being forced to be patient means that you're going to take good trades, ones that have good setups, and you're not going to be emotional. Because, you know, if something's going down, and you're trying to be a breakout trader, what do breakout traders try to do? They try to go with it, but then it snaps back on them and then they're a whole world of trouble. And so it's, you know, three minutes is not a long time, but in day trading, as you know, three minutes is a long time, isn't it? Yeah. And so is there just, a preference for time frame for this strategy for breakouts in general? I believe that all setups should work on all time frames and all instruments. Um, I do. I do. I don't think you can. I think that you're, what you need to do is you have to develop a sense of pattern recognition for price action. And then that can be transferred to any instrument. Because if you find like a specific instance that only works on one particular instrument, you've probably curve fit it to that instrument. And then when that pattern stops working, uh, you're left with nothing and you have to find something else. So that's why I try to focus on things that are universal that you can use anything. Cause I mean, we, we use the same theory of a Bitcoin daily. And now we're also using that same theory on a NASDAQ futures one minute. Do you see how that, that works? Yep. Yeah. It's almost beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I love it, man. You know, I do. All right. We got one minute left. You got any more questions? Um, maybe we'll get into the spikes, uh, later on. So yeah. this time we analyzed the actual breakouts, how to yeah. identify them. Which ones are good? Which ones are bad? Yeah. And yeah. Well, so far, so good. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. And well, just to follow up, we're going to jump up to a five minute right here. And again, uh, in the last two days, you know, we've been in a down down market for all the things. And you can see where uh, this morning at 845 a.m. Eastern, it set up a spike. But did it trigger the spike? Oh, uh, sorry. I don't know what you mean. By that. Well, it, it's set up at nine eight forty five on the five minute Nasdaq. It set up oh, a yep. spike, didn't it? But did it trigger? Yeah. No, no. So it, it kept you it. out, kept you from taking a loss. And then the same thing happened on yesterday at the open. We watched that together, didn't we? Um, yep. And so again, you had another spike set yeah, up. Yeah, that was open. a good spike. Yeah. I remember it. And did it? Uh, did it trigger? Yeah, all the way. 
No, no, no. It, it, this, I mean, the, the it, reversal. It, it, the, 